All right, how y'all doing? Uh, it's a smelly mess in here right now. I blew a bunch of rust and crap out of the fuel tank is what I'm working on on this uh, 1925 Chrysler. And uh, to look inside the tank through the spout looked pretty good. I was thinking, man, I'm going to get lucky on this tank. But then I noticed there's some rust in it just floating around. So I said it had to come from somewhere. So just to be safe, I just whacked a hole in it. Let me let you look see. All right. You can see if you look inside the tank, it, it looks like, you know, just a little bit of cleaning would be fine. But this is what I was seeing, all this here. This is inside the bottom of the tank. This is actually pretty decent, that part. I mean, I, that would clean up easy. But the problem is, this is what's on the top of the tank. That. So that's all in here, on both sides. The sides and the bottom are fine. But you ever take a fuel tank for granted that it's clean, uh, you might be... Uh, Surprised just how nasty it actually is. Now that's some pretty crusty stuff there. Now uh, that would drive the fuel pump and the engine crazy if you don't get that clean. Uh, and you could run a bunch of chemicals through this, but uh, it's just uh, I I used to do that, and I still had some minor problems. It takes a lot to get this stuff clean, and you really need to get it clean. Uh, so I said, man, from now on, I'm just going to whack a hole in it, because it's easy enough to close back up. You just tack it in place. Uh, basically, just tack it a couple places, and then put some fiberglass mat over it with epoxy, and then put your tank sealer in it. A tank sealer will seal the epoxy, the fuel from getting to the epoxy. So you won't have any problem there, but you'll be able to stick your hand in here. And if you want to take a bead blaster or something, you can get in there and you can bead blast it or you can take a sander. Whatever it takes to get this stuff clean and get it shiny metal. So it's uh, this is the easiest way for me. And I've done a, a number of these tanks like this. Plus you get to look inside the tank, make sure everything's okay. Uh, this tank's got a great big old bend in it right there. So now I can take my hammer and get in there and maybe I can knock it out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little hard because it's you know not a lot of room and, and it's a corner. So that's going to be a hard knockout, but uh, I might be able to do something with it. But uh, that's where we are. And, of course, you won't see any of this once you get through with it. It'll be hidden. Because it just does go underneath here. And you can see about that much of the tank. But that much of the tank is going to be like in here. So you won't see this patch. And that, that would be a good thing. I got the fuel line clean. That's what all this was, is blowing crap through the fuel line. That's the main feed line. I got my electric fuel pump and my electric fuel pump I'm gonna put it right here under the frame so all I gotta do is open this door and lift the floor up. I can get right to the pump easy enough because this floor is just gonna sit there. <clears throat> and I got it uh, put together up here. This was the uh, uh, vacuum operated fuel pump. And I am not going to use that, but I'm going to keep it in place and make it look like it's being used. So what I did, uh, in here, I redid the fittings. And this fitting here, which screws into the bottom of this, which would normally feed all this, uh, I soldered the hole up here, up top. So when it screws into, screws into the, to the fuel tank, it's just a soldered up hole. There's nothing can go from here up. But it looks like it will. This is the actual feed line coming from the fuel pump. So it's going to come in here, then come out through the filter, 
and go into the carburetor so it would actually look like this is working. Uh, you know, you won't be able to see. If you didn't know, you wouldn't understand what was going on here, but it would look like it was working the way it was meant to work, you know, factory. But I, I don't know about all this keeping a big unit of fuel in here, which is probably okay, but I don't like the idea of having a container of fuel trying to make this work with a vacuum and then have the exhaust right there. I mean, it's bad enough to have everything right here. I'll have to see how that works because I don't want it to heat up the fuel so bad that we get a vapor lock in the carburetor. So uh, I don't know how that played a role in these old cars. Uh, I would imagine if it got too weird, it would, it could do that. It could heat up the fuel and boil it if it got hot enough, but maybe it doesn't get hot enough, but we'll see. Uh, if it does, I'll put a little shield around it and that'll take care of it. But this is my fix. So once I get all this completely finished and I'm going to run this line, turn this fitting and run the line straight down on this side. And it's going to look just like it was all hooked up. And good to go. Uh, you know, even this is the old the vacuum line that goes to it. And I'm going to even, I'm going to hook a vacuum line up to it. But what I'm going to do is, see this fitting right here? I'll take this fitting out and put a bead of solder inside the T there. So it can't pull any vacuum. So it, it'll be hooked up, but it won't pull anything because it'll be a blank hole uh, on the fitting. Uh... Yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna do there. So it's uh, completely disabled, but it'll it'll give the appearance of it being 100% accurate. Uh, so that's what we're doing. We're doing the fuel system. Once I get the fuel system done, then I gotta tackle the brakes. I still got the wheels off of it. I'm working on those. Uh, I'm gonna put the uh, brake booster in. And I'm going to get one off like a Chevy truck, uh, early Chevy truck, and I'm going to make it fit. And then I'm going to pump brake fluid through all the lines to make sure they're all clear. Because this thing's got, uh, looks like three-eighths brake line. This, this is a brake line. And I have never seen a brake line using 3 8 copper before. But that's what it is. That's 3 8 copper right here. And that's the rear brakes. Uh, and of course, it's got a, a fitting that's split right down the middle. See that fitting? Ferrell? That's, I mean, yeah, it's split right down the middle, so i got to fix that. But boy, uh, this is a crazy setup. But this is what, I guess it worked. Because uh, the car isn't crashed, so uh, I'm going to try to keep it that way. <clears throat> I just don't know why they did 3 eighths. It just seems like a lot uh, to begin 3 eighths, then use copper. It just, I don't, I don't get it, but hey, um, I'm the people that design this know more than I know. So uh, that's where we are. Uh, let's see. I don't have anything else to show you here. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's about it. So I'm just going to keep putzing with this tank. There's fuel pump I'm going to use. Come off an old uh, diesel generator. And I've got about three of them. And they seem to be pretty good pumps. Uh, they last forever. So that's what I'm going to use in this. I've already got it all cleaned, took the filter out of it and cleaned it. And so I, I guess we're going to be good to go. So I'm going to start figuring out what I got to do with this fuel tank. I don't know if I'm going to sand it or uh, bead blast it. It's going to be a little tight because it isn't that deep of a tank. So we'll have to see. Just see, I'll try a couple of things and see what happens. I might even scrape it or I don't know. I just have to see. But I'll give you a look at it after I get it uh, cleaned and uh, weld it all back together and get ready to put the gas tank sealer in it. Uh, so that's where we are. All right. All right, guys. So uh, 
I've made a whole bunch of videos to someone say something about them. Up yours, whatever. You know, just give me a hint. If I'm doing it right, if I'm doing it wrong, or if it ain't worth looking at, then oh well. <laughs> All right, so I'll see y'all later. Bye.